Now, that's what I call a tweeter. Wait to see the size of these things. They're dated 1994. I'll put my hand next to it, give you an idea of the size of the body. Absolutely massive. There's some kind of mad flare in the front of it. That must be an adapter point to go into a massive big horn. So what have we got here then? We have some GBL 2440s and even rarer GBL 2441s. I think they're more sought after than these, but when I, when I have them side by side, I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference in in the construction of them. They're absolutely huge, big, big body things. So the 20, what's that, 2440s have these big adapter plates in the front of them. It may have been from a public address system, maybe in a football field or something. They were probably off of there. Um, but it's basically the same unit. The dimensions won't look quite similar. So should we pop one open and have a look inside? Okay. Now this is empty. The diaphragm of the tweeter sits in here and fires out through a port in the front. That one's got the adapter on it. But you can see it expands exponentially. exponentially. Uh, let's have a look at one that's got, actually got the... Yeah, this is difficult. Don't let it stretch it too much. So there's the... That's what the diaphragm fires through. As you can see, there's these very, very finely machined gaps in it. What happens is the diaphragm is bigger than the throat that it exits through, so it generates a lot of compression. So these things are actually called compression drivers. And there's one of the original diaphragms that are in it. I believe they're made out of titanium. So they're made in 1994, two years time, they're going to be 30 year old. The paint's taking a bit of a kicking on them, but they're in surprisingly good condition. I think there were 110, 111 decibels at one, what, one metre, so even by today's standards, it's a fairly efficient old uh, old unit, so it is. There's another one here. So as you can see, it's the same sort of idea. It looks as if Mr. JRM replaced this in 493, but that doesn't make sense, does it? Because it says in the back, 1994. Hmm, I don't know. So the hi hi fi guys love these old uh, GBL compression drivers. The issue I had with them is they can generate such an output that the horn that they sit on the flare it can actually distort if you turn the volume up too much. And we used to suffer they used to suffer from a thing called horn honk. At a certain point the horn would resonate with the uh, tweeter. And make a hell of a racket. It was like uh, getting your head cut off with a, a buzzsaw or something. Uh, however, they were amazing things when I, when I used them back in my uh, old school PA days. I think the frequency response is from about 500 cycles up to 10 kilohertz. So that's quite a broad bandwidth. Uh, yeah, so hi five guys absolutely love these old collectible pieces of GBL kit. There's a date in this one. Nah. GBL dominated the pro audio market for 20 or 30 years. Then uh, an Italian manufacturer called BNC came along, and there was another Italian manufacturer called RCF. A lot of people's opinions of RCF are based on the little plastic molded speakers that they make that are kind of okay, but RCF, trust me, makes some really, really good uh, good, good uh, loudspeakers, as do BNC. I'm sure GBL are still on the game, however, in Europe, BNC and GBL have kind of taken over, uh, BNC and RCF have kind of taken over. There was a, a French manufacturer called PHL. They made their own uh, drive units as well, and they, 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 were, they were so phenomenal, mainly Cone loudspeakers. I, I can hear music going in the background. Should we go and see what's happening? Fantastic. Well, we're always there. 
grew up on the Alvin Brothers. So that's James uh, playing guitar. He's just a dead nice guy. Phenomenal, phenomenal musician. So what we had today, I look at some vintage JPL tweeters. And James doing Ramble, Rambling Man by Roman Brothers. So, how was this upload? I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10. I only give my falafels 10 out of 10. But on my YouTube channel, a 3 out of 10 is pretty good, isn't it? Oh, the other thing, I noticed the other day, I, I don't keep up to date with my YouTube stuff, but over 200 100 follow, follows. Th thanks so much. For subscribing to the channel and we've got some regular commentators commenters as well it's it's real great to see people taking taking an interest in it considering i only started the channel as a bit of a joke and a bit of a wind up for gavin Irvin, shug the horny haggis i'm really pleased that i've even got 200 subscribers you know i was, I was never trying to be joe rogan so jbl 2040 JBL 2440s and JBL 2441s. I don't know what the difference is. If you have a, a more in-depth knowledge of these things, again, when I was younger, we, we used to use these P's all over the place. If you've got, got more in-depth knowledge and if this was interesting to you, whack some comments in the comment section and we can discuss the merits of JBL. John Bulo Lansing. I believe his brother was called Altec Lansing, was it? I'm, make, I'm making that up. I don't know. The strange thing about JBL gear was the red term usually produced backwards motion, which I always thought was a bit strange. But anyway, a seven minute upload, not done with these for ages. God bless you all, and take care. Bye.